My name is Todd. I'm here just visiting. If there's anyone here that would Who are they? like to... <laughs> How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. If there's anyone that would like to <clears throat> make your presence known, sorry about that. That kind of just you know, right off the bat. Um, if there's anybody here that would like to make your presence known, please feel free to do so using the device that I'm holding in my hand. If you have a name and are able to share that with me, you know, that's even better. So at our first stop here at Oak Hill, I wanted to make sure that we uh, visited uh, the Coopers here. Um, quite a few of these interments were moved uh, from a different location. So here we have Harriet Cornelia, wife of John Frederick Cooper, daughter of Ashel R. and Caroline McGuire Smith, born August 23rd. 1837 and died May 15th, 1915. And here is John Frederick Cooper, Confederate States Army, born July 27th, 1834, died September 5th, 1861. Major John Frederick Cooper enlisted on May 13th, 1861 as captain of Company H, 8th Georgia Infantry, Confederate States Army. He was wounded just over two months later at the Battle of Manassas, Virginia on July 21st, 1861. He finally succumbed to those wounds on September 6, 1861, when he was just 26 years old. He left behind wife Harriet and three sons, John Paul, Walter, Gerald, and Frederick C. And quite a nice ob obelisk for both. We have some Smart markers car. here. But here we have, in memorum, this family cemetery containing 11 graves was removed from Glen Holly in 1949 to permit construction of Alatoona Dam and Reservoir. So these individuals were removed uh, from an old town, well, an old town that used to be where now Lake Alatoona here in uh, Northwest Atlanta resides. So um, I say Northwest Atlanta, it's, it's Northwest Georgia, but anybody who lives here considers Atlanta to be pretty much Georgia. the entire, <laughs> Georgia, that's correct, the entire, uh, uh, upper state of Georgia. Uh, it's not quite that big, but it is big. And we're going to slide over here to this very large obelisk. There's a couple in here that are larger than that. And this is Sophronia A. R. Cooper, wife of Mark I. Cooper, daughter of John Bundle and Susan, Susan Coffey, born June 28th, 1801, died February 6th, 1881. And this is another Cooper, Rosa Lou Cooper, born 1844, died August 15th, 1912. Beside her, daughter of Thomas P. and Vol Volumia, Volumnia C. Stovall, died May 24th, 1855, aged seven years. And here, sacred memory of Camilla C. I believe that's Camilla C. Daughter of Maria A. and Sephira Sophirona R. Cooper, 
who died, who departed this life on the this day, 1st of June, 18... That might be 11 or 71, age 17 years. Wow. And I almost forgot, but I'm not going to forget. Mr. Cooper, thank you very much for your service. So behind him, we have Thomas L. Cooper, Colonel, 8th Georgia Regiment, Confederate States of America. Born October 8, 1831. Died December 23, 1861. Thomas Lackington Cooper enlisted on May 17, 1861, and was elected as captain for Company F, 8th Georgia Infantry, Confederate States Army. He was promoted to major on June 1st of 1861 and then to lieutenant colonel on July 21st of 1861. He died on December 24th, same year, near Centerville, Virginia, as a result of a head injury he sustained from falling from his horse. And here we have Adonia C. Cooper. Uh, the 20th day of October, 1839. And I can't. Uh, died on the first day of November 18. I can't read that last date. And here we have Mark Eugene Cooper, Confederate veteran, son of Mark A. and Sophronia A.R. Cooper, November 1842, December 1907. So Mr. Mark Cooper, thank you for your service. Mark Cooper was the younger brother of John and Thomas Cooper. He enlisted on May 13th along with his brother John as First Lieutenant Company H, 8th Georgia Infantry. He resigned his commission and left the Confederate States Army on 28 January 1862. It is supposed due to the deaths of both of his older brothers. Mr. Thomas Cooper, Colonel, thank you for your service, sir. General. General. I'll have to look, see if uh, that was posthumous or if they uh, actually have the marker incorrect. So if it is General, Mr. Cooper, I apologize. We'll see who this is behind them. We have the Browns. This looks like it was moved. Lee A. Willis, Jr. Tech 4, U.S. Army, U.S. Air Force, World War II, Korea. That would be... August 2nd, 1919 to March 19, March 2nd, 1996, Purple Heart. This is a Willis grave. Um, this is all covered up. I see another military down here. So I'm not going to miss out the opportunity. If you hear a little bit of background noise, which I don't think you will with the mics, but uh, there is a train going behind us. This is John W. Davis, Georgia, Private Company D, 474th QM Truck Regiment, World War II, August 23rd, 1903 to April 4th, 1952. Thank you very much for your service, sir.
We have Douglas B. Fisher, Staff Sergeant, U.S. Army, World War II. That's December 25th, 1922 to May 28th, 1987. Thank you very much for your service, sir. Slay Carter, Tech Sergeant, U.S. Air Force, November 19th, 1913 to October 24th, 1993. Thank you very much for your service, sir. A lot of veterans. Here's another. Alvin McPherson Sr. And that would be S2 US Navy, World War II. And that is January 6th, 1913 to October 28th, 19. 75. Thank you much for your service, sir. Sounds like I'm 13 again, the way my voice is cracking up. And here's another. Harry E. Dawson, U.S. Navy, World War II. June 29th, 1914 to April 4th, 1976. Thank you very much for your service, sir. And this little small faux vault here. I don't know if I can... This is... Wow. Mark W. I can't take, make that out. It's oh, it's too faded for me to see. There was a Cooper family member that I had missed, and that was Mark Anthony Cooper. Uh, what I found out about him was very interesting and will require a separate video just on his story alone. So stay tuned for that video to drop. Now we'll continue with the walk. This is the back portion. That's the newer portion over there. And then it goes way back over there, up the hill on the other side as well. All right. We are going to relocate and we'll pick up here in a second. Okay, we're back. And yeah, we're in a different portion of the cemetery we were over there, but I saw this small mausoleum here and this very large uh, column there. So I wanted to see that. There looks to be a historical marker with it. And there's another one there. And uh, up there on the hill, up there on the hill there is also a, um, a very large mausoleum and column with a historical marker. So those are two of the places I know I need to go. Um, so this looks to be a simple mausoleum here. It was... A mason, that would be G.W. Kinnaman, 1861 to 1957, and his wife, Melvina Hyman, 1861 
1932. Like I, said, uh, like I said, it's very small, but still quite nice. Sometimes simple can be just as nice and elegant as something built more extravagantly. I'm fairly certain that the way that's built, it will be here for quite some time. Probably after some of these other places have gone away. And beside them is Henry Grady Davis, September 2nd, 1893 to July 2nd, 1967. And Bessie K. Davis, March 2nd, 1898 to November 19th, 1974. I did see this one here. This is W. Ephraim Moss, Georgia, SCBI, U.S. Naval Reserve, World War II, June, 28th, 1913 to September 4th, 1960. Thank you much for your service, sir. Wow, that is a big one. So, we have John W. Aiken, 18, 1859 to 1907, initiated in Cartersville Lodge, number 63, on June 2nd, 1891, passed on June 30th, and raised on August 4th, 1891, was W.M. Lodge of Georgia in 1897-1898, judge of Cartersville City Court, president of City School Board, President of, and Secretary of Georgia Bar Association, Representative and State Senator for Bartow County, County, President of the Georgia Senate, a lawyer, politician, farmer, miner, railroad, builder, writer, and devoted member of the Methodist Church. Masonry glories in immortality, plants the Asia Akia, on every grave, transforms death into an angel of light, looks on the body as old clothes, the man wore, and points upward to his home. A great American, a great Southerner, a great Georgian, and truly a great Mason. Very impressive. John Wesley Aiken, born Cassville, Georgia, June 10th, 1859, died in Cartersville, October 18th, 1907. Christian jurist, statesman, orator, man of letters. At his death, president of the Senate of Georgia. And here is Mr. Aiken's resting place here. And here we have his wife, Frances John Johnson Aiken, September 1st, 1864, March 23rd, 1935. Wow. Again, very, very large. But beautiful. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't spot a flag and not go over to take a look at it. Here we have Walter C. Lawhon, Georgia, Private 38th Infantry Division, July 30th, 1941. 
Thank you for your service, sir. So here is John Thomas, son of James and Sarah Cleghorn, was a member of the of Co Company I, First He's Cavalry, not. Georgia, born November 29th, 1843, and Deli died July 19th, 1885. Thank you much for your service, sir. Here we have William Doubthit, son of James and Sarah Doubthit, Doubthit Cleghorn, born September 28, 1841, died April 29, 1917. He was a member of the 1st Georgia Cavalry, served faithfully four years in the Army of the Confederacy, and was awarded the Cross of Honor. Thank you much for your service, sir. These are fields. Very nice as well. I just don't like the ones that lay down. They get weathered way too easy and way too quickly. Here we have Third Corporal George Seaborn Cobb. Company B, Cavalry Battalion, Phillips Legion, Georgia Volunteers, Confederate States Army, March 10th, 1842, February 5th, 1909. Thank you much for your service, sir. And he also appears to have been a Mason. We're gonna make our way back. Yes. See, this is this is what I hate to see right here. There's no way of identifying who that is, and which is sad. Nobody understands. Here we have Lieutenant Colonel, is that FM? Yeah, Lieutenant Colonel FM Ford, Company H, 18th Georgia Infantry, Confederate States Army, May 13th, 1832 to September 21st, 1903. Thank you much for your service. This Confederate headstone is very unassuming considering the person that it represents. And this is Francis Marion Ford. He was born in 1832 in Dixon County, Tennessee. And he arrived in Cass County with his family in 1850. Cass County is now Bartow County. And immediately engaged in the iron business. He and his brother D.S. Ford ran a furnace on Stamp Creek until the war began. In 1861, he raised a company of infantrymen and was made captain of Company H, 18th Georgia Infantry. After the Battle of Fredericksburg, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel and was assigned to commanding the regiment and remained in command through the surrender. He was known as a gallant officer and a true soldier. The regiment fought in the battles of Malvern Hill, Gaines Farm, 2nd Manassas, Sharpsburg, Fredericksburg, Chancellorsville, Wilderness, Petersburg, Chickamauga, and Knoxville. He served under John B. Hood, McLaw, and Longstreet. After the war, 
Ford followed his mercantile pursuits and was actually elected to the state legislature in 1868. He was elected mayor of Cartersville on a few occasions and was serving his second consecutive term when he passed away. Reading a quote from his obituary dated September 24, 1903 in the News and Current, Cartersville, Georgia. Colonel Ford was a man of fine principles, being honorable, frank, and true in his dealings with his fellow men. That rugged valor, which he illustrated as a soldier, he carried into civil life, and at all times exhibited the full courage of his convictions. And I'll pick up this trash. Grease all sides. So here we have Ralph Donald Bruce, PFC, U.S. Army, May 14, 1934, to September 27, 2003. Thank you much for your service, sir. I'm carrying that can in one hand and gimbal in the other and also trying to pay my respects. So. And I just saw this one here. Here we have Donald W. Payne, U.S. Army, April 30th, 1939 to January 14th, 1990. Thank you much for your service, sir. Right here is this small little tomb crypt is Willard V. Morris Jr. Bill, who was born March 20th, 1925, and died July 29th, 2007. And here we have Charles T. Eves, Georgia, private, first mortar, um, first motor mechanics regiment, air service, June 18th, 1931. Wow. Thank you much for your service, sir. Here we have Roy P. Eves, Georgia, Private, Battery C, 318th Field Artillery, World War I, January 24th, 1892, to May 28th, 1960. Thank you much for your service, sir. If uh, anyone wonders what the significance of these coins are, especially the pennies, pennies, anyone can show their respect by putting a penny down. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I'll I'll put up uh, what the significance of each denomination is. But I, I believe that a penny is anyone can put the penny down, whether you knew the person or not. I believe a five uh, a nickel is that you knew the person and you. Um, served with them, um, meaning that you were in the same theater as them, you were in the same training as them, you were in the army, they were in the army, or in this case, in, in, as in this case, um, I believe a dime is that you served with them and you were there at the time, you were there at their death, uh, and a quarter is you served with them and you were there when they died physically. You were like right beside them in battle, in combat, or results or a result thereof. But I will I will put up a screenshot of what they mean and uh, that way if anyone is ever in a cemetery carry some pennies in your pocket. Um, I'm all out. I usually keep them in my truck. And I 
these days I don't like to use coins anymore. So, um, but if you can keep your keep your coins and if you're in here and you see a service member's grave, you know, give them a quick uh, bit of prayer and respect and throw a coin down there. So here we have Pierce Manning Butler Young, 1836 to 1896. PMB Young was born in Spartanburg, South Carolina on November 15th, 1836. What is that? His parents were Dr. Robert Maxwell and Elizabeth Caroline Jones Young. The Young family came to Georgia in 1839. He graduated from Georgia Military Institute in Marietta in 1856, which uh, Georgia Military Institute, I believe, is now located in Milledgeville. He studied law, entered the United States Military Academy at West Point, New York in 1857, and resigned two months before graduation to enter the Confederate Army. He became the youngest major general in both armies, and after the war, he came home to Cartersville, was elected to fill the vacancy in the 41st Congress, re-elected to the 42nd and 43rd Congresses, and served from 1870 to 1875. Afterwards, he resumed agricultural pursuits, uh, appointed the United States Commissioner to the Paris Exposition in 1878. He was Consul General at St. Petersburg, Russia, 1885 to 1887, appointed minister to Guatemala and Honduras by President Grover Cleveland, 1893 to 1896. He died in the Presbyterian Hospital, New York City, July 6, 1896, and interred here. Wow, he was a busy man. This is his monument and it, it's a Roman or Greek column that's broken at the top. Uh, I believe that's to symbolize a life cut short. Negro. Wow, the crest on that side. And this is on the street side, so I have to be careful, watch what I'm doing. And what we just read, it's written on here as well. Wow. And you have family members here as well. Thank you very much for your service and sacrifice, sir. Uh, this man served both, both countries. In the interest of keeping the videos short, I'll pause the walk here and invite you to pick it up in part two of the Oak Hill Cemetery Walk, which will be available very soon. As always, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit those like and notification buttons, and I'll see you on our next walk. Have a blessed one. And thank you for watching Cemetery Walks with Milbet. Please don't forget to subscribe, hit that like and notification button, and we'll see you back here on our next walk.